Hi, and welcome to another episode of Ecom at One. And today's guest is Paula Short. Now, Paula is the co-founder of Beauty Boulevard, um, which is a Lincolnshire-based um, cosmetic beauty brand that um, Paula and I met very, very briefly, probably about 18 months ago, but we haven't really had a proper chat. But it transpires that she's only sat about 500 yards around the corner, which is pretty crazy. So how are you doing, Paula? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. We're um, taking this uh, social distance in quite a <laughs> To have our interview but uh, yeah I was uh, amazed to find out how close we were that I was know. important. I know it's crazy isn't it it's crazy so I think um, I always like to kick off with a bit of background really just to give us a bit of your sort of career story to date if that's okay. So using the the words career story as if there was a plan there's never been a plan for me I'm afraid Um one of my very first um, jobs or part-time jobs was in the hairdressers and that sparked a love of hair and beauty for me that I didn't realize at the time. I just thought I was addicted to the, the chat and the music and the people yeah. and the, yeah. the vibrancy. It's such a vibrant, um, wholesome place to work. Um, but it kicked off a love of everything hair and beauty to me many, many moons ago. Many moons ago. Yeah, yeah. but um, I, had, I did various kind of courses growing up and I did like secretarial courses where I learned shorthand, which has oh. come invaluable to me not yeah. um so <laughs> the, the whole typing and bookkeeping and uh, i found myself fall into a a job where i was in charge of uh, a production line ordering components to make sure that the production would would run on time uh, for all the the factory i didn't realize how much experience that role gave me in my current role because to to have a cosmetics business, you need to understand from the production of components through to the new product development of shade, you need to know all of it. So understanding lead times and distribution and importation. And I never realized how much the other roles in my career has actually led up to this one part. So the passion of the, the hair and beauty, the knowledge of the import exports and you know, um, lead times and components, the and then oh. I can make these end magical products that are amazing, if I may say so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's sort of how many years in the making. Obviously, all those years of not knowing maybe where that's going to lead, like most people. And obviously now, Beauty Boulevard, um, sort of seven years. I think it is, isn't it? Seven-ish years mm -hmm. into yes. the journey. What would you say makes Beauty Boulevard um, so special? Um, well, as I say, my, my career path, if you like, I, I didn't really choose. I only ever choose things that I love to do. Um, and it's not even like I choose them. I just get excited about something and that's it. My focus is there. And yeah. Once I have a, a role that I'm excited and focused on, you couldn't stop me if you tried. It just yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, because it feels like a, a call to action and that's it, I'm doing that. But Beauty Boulevard, again, I, I believe, and this is my true belief, that Beauty Boulevard was born out of friendship. And I have a friend, Rachel, who we think alike, we have the same spirit for life, we're optimists, we love nothing better than laughing and just <laughs> enjoying life. And it was within our hair and beauty salon in Bennett's in, in Lincoln that we created our first product, Glitter Lips. And that's where Beauty Boulevard flourished from because uh, we didn't even know you needed a company name above that. We were just like, ooh, this would be a great idea. And it was, <laughs> I say so. And uh, it, Beauty Boulevard came from the friendship between me and Rachel and having that trust in one another that yeah. you know, together we could do something. There was no plan. We yeah. hate, hated the word strategy, hated it. Um, so there was no plan. It was just, let's see what tomorrow brings. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just a real passion and enjoyment of what you do, a real friendship yeah. and a real trust in each other, which is a, it's a big thing, isn't it? Obviously finding, oh. somebody, you know, to find somebody, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people for the podcast, you know, and where we work with you know, hundreds of different clients and quite often, you know, it's, it's quite often one man, one man or lady at the top, you know, more than ever, you know, and then to, to partnerships or you know have their own challenges that go with them but obviously you've been able to make that work so what what sort of things would you say about that you know so trying to find a partner or the benefits of having a partner working with you um oh gosh 
to me, it's personality. The, yeah. the logistics of a business, the, um, I don't know, the marketing, the sales, the accountancy, you can purchase services. Yeah. You, you can't purchase a personality. And I think if you, um, if you get the right combination of people and the right personalities and drive and enthusiasm and, and the trust, as I say, um, when, when we work together, it seems like there's more hours in the day because yeah. we can get so much done and, and we never tire. When the passion is so much, you don't tire of it, which yeah. I can understand right. the teams that have worked for us you know, over the years, they tire. They're like, enough <laughs> of no, whereas me and Mr. like, okay, one yeah. more hour. Yeah, more hour. you got somebody there to bounce off that's that passionate, that is, you know, is there with you on that journey. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely. And the, and we've been really lucky. The the people we've worked with right from day one um, have been so, I mean, the, the support and the backing in and around our own, like, business environment has been huge. Um, and we definitely couldn't have done it without the support of the local council and grants. Yeah teams and things like that and um, there's so much out there that small business can tap into but I think the main thing is having the right partnership because it just fuels that's where the that's where the the oxygen and then the fire yeah. comes yeah 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 so within the business you've got I believe obviously different strands in different products but there's different strands like thinking of the, the people that are listening to the podcast the e-commerce store owners obviously you've created a product you've created a brand you know very very successfully that brand selling internationally um you've got sort of a distribution side a retail side and then the e-commerce side so the e-commerce side i'm really keen to sort of dive into a bit more so what advice would you give somebody that's maybe just starting out with their e-commerce sort of journey they've got they've got their own brand or they're importing or representing a brand um and now they're like right we need to get up and running you know and, and do some damage in the industry what would be your sort of recommendations to people that are listening in I don't know whether it's got easier or whether I understand it more. I, I never know whether uh, that viewpoint is. Um, I think now, as opposed to seven years ago when we didn't have any experience, I think there is so much information available right now. And to actually create an e-commerce site has been made so much easier by things like Shopify. Yes. And they take all the elements and they take the payment terms and, and return. everything is yeah. there and kind of like, opening a, a shop front and they've already put the shelves it's, in, yeah. they've put the till in, they've already put everything in and you just put your products in and, and yes. off you go. Um, yeah. And the support network of it, it's it's so accessible, it's so reasonable, cost, all of it. I think the e-commerce side, it's the layering though that I think might be a, a, a winner for a business. So knowing your customer, knowing who he, she is and walking through the steps of your business and you know every so often I go in as a customer and I order things to see what the voice is how what the really re do I get my tracking number can yeah. I track the order does it, all these links work if yeah. I have a spare five minutes if I'm on a train or I'm going somewhere I sit and I am my customer you're buying, so you're, you're buying something going through the the sales process the checkout searching for oh, things yeah. testing the search checking the checkout Tracking numbers for the delivery. Um, have you said? Have you ever sent something back to your own place to see what happens with the return? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's quite, quite a good idea. Normally, I put a note in uh, in the note saying, "Please don't send this," ah. as I got, I have enough products. Yeah, please I, credit. <laughs> I, I, I always try and uh, because I've been a business owner for many, many, many years. I've always had a physical um, hair and beauty salon, or, or you know, different. Uh, Ventures. I always try and look through the woo, you know the um, e-commerce site as I would my physical sites. Yeah. So if you were walking through the front door of your own store and the poster has fallen off the wall, or there you haven't actually, you know, advertised that you've got a sale on or a special yeah. offer. Yeah. People won't know. So it's yeah. the same. Thing. You walk through the steps you've you've engaged. That's brilliant, Paula. You know, when you say it like that, it's so simple. I think you know, people invest in say maybe you know Shopify, Magento, whichever platform of choice. But Shopify, they get a nice theme and they put their products on and go, "Yay, that's it, we're done." But mm -hmm. the reality is, you know, you can go through that process. There's so much more than you know that that's page category, subcategory, products, checkout, invoicing, okay. experience. Even just the beginning part of that, you, you think, all right, that's done. We've got that on there. 
when you actually start to get some data from the people that are actually visiting your site, you might find you don't know your customer. You yeah. think you know your customer. Yeah. But once you actually start to get visitors, and that in itself is another job to do, yeah. to try and make customers to come, target the people you know that would be interested. Once you start to get that data coming in, you can adapt your shop that little bit more and better and fluid. And there's so much you can do now to really kind of pinpoint down into making your store one that you're targeting the people that want to see it and not just targeting everybody. And two, that once they get there, you're actually offering something they want and not, not what you want to sell, what they want to buy. Yeah. So, so, so permanently checking that customer journey and then, all my, and then always looking at the data seeing where people are maybe falling off the site, you know, what they're buying in terms of cross-sell, upsell, that type of thing. Um, yeah, fantastic. So um, what would you say has been your best channel in terms of um, sales online? So in terms of, you know, driving the actual sales through the website? Um, I have to say we have a, a distributor that we retail to and he embarrasses me how good he is. In yeah. me. He, he, has done, he has done many phone calls with me trying to explain his magic potion. I still don't get it. Um, he, he's superb at what he does and his, his sales are more than mine. And we are products, yeah. But then, you know, that's, that's yeah. fine. When you supply somebody who's very good at their job, yeah. it will be much better. Yeah. Um, but we've just taken on a... a potential new distributor in uh, the Middle East, in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, around there. And they're a very, very large um, e-commerce site. So I'm actually very excited to see what that yeah. one, because it, it's a different market. Again, it's a market. We've been in, in some stores out there, Debenhams and things, but to actually hit the e-commerce side of it there, yeah. I'm so excited to see who our customer is there because it doesn't transcend your customer in the UK and your customer in the US. It's not your customer elsewhere. Very different, very different. So, so what we're saying then is building partnerships with key people that inevitably will multiply more than, you know, more than what you can do on your own, working with key partners that have already got that, say, e-commerce foothold, that retail foothold, that, you know, partnership where they've got, you know, I know you do stuff with airlines and things like that. Um, so in terms of building those partnerships, those guys that have got e-commerce stores, they've got their own brand, they've built their brands, you know, and now, you know, what we're saying is, you know, having those strategic partnerships with key people, yeah, it's a huge multiplier, you know, one key, one key relationship, you know, can make this huge mm -hmm. thing. What, what advice would you give there for those guys that are thinking, right, how do I get, you know, where do I start? It's uh, like how we met, um, networking. I think if you go to networking, you just never know where or when. Like I've been to some really amazing, huge network events, and I've walked away with nothing. And and I don't mean that in a in a oh I have to have something from everywhere. Yes. But you go thinking that the opportunities must be enormous, and you come back and you go actually it, I didn't really get to speak to anybody. And yet I've been at local networking events, and I've tapped into relationships that we nurtures and and. You know, we've been working together maybe four four years now, and yeah. it's not just, it, once you get on with somebody in a, a relationship, it's not just yours and theirs. It's who you can introduce them to, and who yes. they can introduce you to. And it is again back to personality. I've yeah. been very very lucky that I've worked with people that you can speak frankly and you can be honest and yeah. and open with. Um, a lot of that comes down to your probably confidence uh, of going out there networking. But obviously. The reality of life is, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, you've got, you've got to get out there. Oh, God, and, yes. and sometimes I think, you know, for the guys that are listening in, that can be a quite a challenging step, can't it, to go, right, you know, I've sat here in my warehouse and built my brand and, you know, I'm not, I'm not used to going out and talking to people, <laughs> you know, and that, that's not, you know, in some instances that, that goes through people's minds, I think, definitely. So, but, so, but, but you but, will, um, I, I think you will never employ somebody who will be as passionate about your brand as you are. Yeah. And, so for, for you to go to the network, even if you go and have a nice, pleasant afternoon, a yeah. little you know, coffee and biscuits, it's not wasted. You're living life. You're, you know, having an experience. But when, when you have a... Um, it's very easy to be passionate about it and sell your brand when you just talk about it. 
yeah, yeah. So you've got to get yourself out, man, is the key thing. Do you, um, so you, you're doing a lot of traveling now. I think, you know, I have seen you, like you say, Dubai. Are you, are you sort of, you're out the office a lot or have you sort of, have you got like a different times of the year where you are, are out more at events and traveling? You know, is that how your sort of industry's calendar works or? Yeah, I think, um, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of traveling. Uh, we've been in the car and airplanes and um, I've been very lucky. I've been to Dubai and New York uh, for yeah. various, Chicago for various meetings. And yeah. um, But majority of the time, it's not glamorous. It's um, yeah. a Greg's vision on the road. It's not, it's not in glamorous. That's what I graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll say oh, New probably. York, New York, Dubai. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Flying in, a few meetings, maybe sneak a pastrami roll somewhere in New York and then fly back. <laughs> Any one night out or not. <laughs> but it's, no, there's been a lot of travelling and I love travelling. Um, and again, I don't like travelling on my own. I like travelling as a team because even when you're sat in the airport, you're talking about new product development and you're, you're just, you know, blue sky thinking, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And so many things can fall out of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously I, you know, um, I've sort of been following your journey, you know, um, on, online, obviously I know you're on Dragon's Den and, you know, you've got your products in a lot of different places. Um, but what are your thoughts on influence and marketing as a, as a channel? You know, I, I do see a lot of people, you know, doing makeup videos and things like that, you know, on YouTube and, and Instagram and things like that. So we do, we do engage with influencers because yeah. it, it would be silly not to, because yeah. um, these, so it's, the influencers that we've worked with are so, again, they're passionate about makeup and beauty. Um, we don't pay influencers because I think that sends out the wrong message, really. That um, not, not yet. You'd never know in years to come. Who knows? And I, and I don't think it's a wrong thing. It's just our decision. So we will gift. If we see influencers that either contact us or we contact them, that we like their work, we like how they create, yeah. Yeah. You, you can get some content created for, for minimal um, output from a business point of view and um, so we can send them a nice gift box of products and from that you get people that are passionate using your products in a way that you may not realize yeah. so that in itself can feed your new product development of how yeah. you evolve and um, so I think influencers are a great thing they are a great thing um, so they're almost and, doing, a, they're doing a market research for you when they're testing stuff and making when, when they, they talk about a whole new angle potentially or a whole new or what it'd be great if, we, if they did this 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 and oh new product idea and I know you have you know you've got obviously glitter lips but you've got other products now haven't you talk to yeah. me about sort of the evolution of the range how that sort of come of, about of course um so the glitter lips is very much for people that want to be seen if you do not want to stand out in the crowd i do not recommend it <laughs> so glitter lips is very much you will be seen and people yeah. will speak to you um so it's definitely not for a wallflower um so from that, we want to, so it's, we know that's not for everybody. So we created a vegan matte lipstick range as well called Mattitude. Um, and that's going extremely well. And it's a, you know, a, a high luxury. All our, our efforts go into making this pro our products as luxurious as we can because um, they're really high quality, but we don't have the marketing budget that Estee Lauder have. So our money we put back into the products. At some point, we will have to push hugely on marketing. But for now, our influencers and our fans do that yeah. for us. Yeah. And we've brought in a, a great product called the Molten Metal Glitter Eyeshadow, which we retail on airlines. And that has, I have to say, that has been our biggest market so far until recently. Yeah, <laughs> and, times. <laughs> gosh, it, it, that's hit us very hard. And we're not, we're all in the same boat. So we're just treading water for now. But um, we had, huge sales right across Europe with Jet2, um, TUI, and it just all stopped in March. And it was like, okay, we'll just yeah. wait, let's wait. But they, it'll, be uh, back. it'll be back stronger than ever, won't it? Oh, it, it, yeah. It, 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 all, all, our, all our products and our new products have been market research within our salon here in Lincoln. All our customers here are great. So <laughs> if we have an idea, we'll float the boat here first. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we'll do some like real uh, market research and find out, you know, what our, what our USP should be, because yeah. you don't want to create a product that you can get everywhere. 
by so everyone. That ability to test out new ideas in your own salon, which is obviously a huge win. And then what would you say is like a, um, for those that are listening in from, from your point of view, how long does it normally take you from maybe that initial idea? Think, oh, do you know what? We've had, we've had 10 influencers talk about creating a, you know, a skin version of X, Y, Z. Typically, how long does it then take you to maybe get it on a shelf completely sort of um, officially stamped and been able to, you know, to sell? Is there a sort of a, is it quite a lengthy process or? Uh, under normal circumstances, um, you're probably talking eight months easily yeah. eight nine yeah. months because yeah. you'd have your you can get um components and things uh, into production and that's quite a lengthy process that's a good um 45 days uh work working days yeah. but why the process you can work on your design and your formulation and your pantones and your colors and your shades and and yeah. then get your marketing in place to, for your route to market but um getting on the shelves is the hard part so getting in front of buyers in the first place, that's the biggest part. And sometimes the buyers won't like what you've produced. So yeah. getting in front of the buyers with an idea first yeah. is a better idea than putting eight, nine months work and effort and minimum yeah. order, and then finding out you've actually done it wrong. Yeah. Speaking of buyers, getting in front of what people are willing to buy into, that's yeah. the hard so getting in front of those buyers, does that go back to sort of the networking and the partnerships that you talked yeah. about? Yeah. Or did you do any sort of online type um, connections as well, you know, like LinkedIn and anything like that? Or is it more like going to industry events more so? Or It's it's industry events. It's um, ta it, sending out um, invitations on LinkedIn to buyers of certain areas and then saying, mind if I kindly sent you um, some items that um we'd like to, we'd like reviewed um it's it's knocking on as many doors as you can because yeah. um you can have a strategy and decide this is where i want to be and this is where my, my products want to be but they might not want them long term so unless you have that conversation with this company that you're aiming for you won't really know whether it it's going to work or not yeah so having those conversations very much before you've invested the eight months, the tens of thousands of pounds, hours, etc., getting the feelers out, knocking on a lot of doors. Of course, you're going to get some no's, but then you know, that's going to then guide the, some of the decisions, rejig things, change designs, change um, you know formulas, you know the, the, the different angle, the different demographics. You know, moving, 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 very nimble. Very, I guess pivot has been the you know the huge the word of the last three months. But I guess you're pivoting stuff all the time based on research and feedback and you know influencers oh, and customers. End up, you can end up with a completely different looking beast than yeah. what you started with. Yeah. Um, but the ideas you have to keep the ideas flowing, or else it yeah. dries up. So having ideas and and they come from anywhere and everywhere. Um, you know we I get together with. Rachel, my uh, business partner here in Bennett, and I'd say 19 out of 20 ideas are rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but there, and there might be a bottle of wine or two involved when we're having these ideas. Um, but but there, there was that one, and you know, the next time we have a meeting, yeah. we we'll actually that wasn't that's a bad idea. A brilliant, brilliant sentence there, because I think the reality yeah. is people listening in and people seeing, you know, you as a very successful brand and other brands that are doing, you know, whether it's, you know, 100 grand a month or 10 million a month thinking, oh, I can't do that. Well, the reality is, you know, we all have, as you just said, you know, a load of shit out here, <laughs> to put it quite frankly, don't we? You know, but we like, you know, but it's that passion, that consistency, that sort of real drive to just keep pushing through, pushing through and think, oh, actually, that's actually not a bad one. <laughs> that's not a bad one. Let's see what, oh, actually, you know, then a, a new thing comes from that, you know, and I think that's the real differentiator, I really, I think we agree, you know, between sort of almost like success and failure, you know, you get hit a couple of times and then you give up. Well, that's, that's life, isn't it? You know, you are, gonna, you know, it's not all going to work, so. But more often than not, even if you do get knocked down, there'll be items that have been said within the meeting that has upset you, that you go, actually, if I'm clever here, I'll take on what they've said. And yeah. sometimes they'll just say no for the hell of saying no. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, they just don't want to. You've got them a long day. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't yeah. Mean, yeah. So having that, having that sort of growth mindset to learn from every situation and and, and then adapt or not if you think they're having a bad day, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can please all the people. <laughs> so on that sort of thread, um, 
obviously not everything goes swimmingly, you know, lots of bumps in the road as any, you know, any entrepreneur, any business, you know, and it's, you know, only got to look at the last three months. So what would you say is one of the biggest challenges you faced in your sort of business career and what were some of the learnings from it? Um, oh gosh. Um, oh, there's been so many. Oh, there's been so many. Well, even like the Dragon's Den uh, thing. So we were invited on Dragon's Den and I'm quite private. I really, really did not want to go on that. <laughs> but I realized it was very good for the brand and it would be very good for us to, to do this. Um, and to actually, to be seen as, I, I, at the time I thought we failed because we didn't get taken on, we failed. The next day, I have to say, so I've been working since I was maybe 14 with part-time jobs and things. I didn't want to go to work. The next day, I really, really didn't want to go to work. And I've never felt like that in, in my entire life. And I gave it a day. And then I said, no, done. That's it. I realized the people that were in that room, I probably couldn't have worked with long term anyway. Um, so it would, I think I might have dodged a bullet. Um, and yeah. And we just realized the fact that they got in touch with us in the first place, we might be onto something here. And of course, the irony was once it, it aired, that was a huge catalyst for us, huge. And it, it gave us a, 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 an audience that we would never have tapped into otherwise. So it, it was a huge, uh, it was the biggest kick I've ever had in my life. Yeah. But um, we adapted and we learned. So we, we reached out to all the other brands like Trunky, Tangle Tees are all these big brands that had been given, you know, shown the door on Dragon's Ru Den. Rudolph, I think, was one I saw the other day. They exactly, posted, exactly. Like, they're after 100 grand for 20%, and that 100 grand's worth 360 million now, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I know. How amazing is that? Um, we, we, oh, sorry. You're fine. Uh, I, something's popping up there, sorry. And, um, but yeah, we, that was the biggest kick in the gut I think I've ever had in business. Um, like we have our normal things where shipments go missing or I don't know. So well, it's, you know, where, where's that, that sort of mindset come from? Can you sort of pinpoint anything like, you know, so, you know, there's a, there's a real thread here through the interview, through the podcast where, you know, you are, you are, you know, almost fearless, you know, obviously you had a knock, you know, on national telly, they're saying no, there's, you know, in your mind, obviously it's like, initially but then next day you're like no screw you <laughs> yeah <laughs> where do you think that is, is it where do you think that's come from it's just how you are how you're built or is that something that's like just built up over the years you're like almost fearless now pretty much um i think as you get older you get fearless anyway because you just you realize that even the worst day is temporary everything is temporary the, your anger feeling or your frustration it's temporary if you yeah. change it you won't feel that way. So to me, every day is just evolving and going. And um, I have to say, I think I take after my mother a lot. Yeah. My mother was a businesswoman and um, very successful as well. And um, she has a very optimistic look on life and very practical, extremely yeah. practical. And yeah. so I probably take after her. But yeah, I've always had the, I just like adventure. That's the bit I love. Yeah. I love it. So to do the same job for you know 20 years is just not who I was ever going to be yeah. really yeah. so it's almost been drilled into you and then uh, you sort of built that resilience that tenacity over the years yeah Good probably all the all the things I got in trouble at school for you know for <laughs> talking and, and not paying full attention to something and being quite you know I, I've already moved on to the next subject and um, that's what's actually stood me in good stead as an adult I think so on a, on a similar strand then, what would one bit of advice you would tell yourself sort of seven, eight years ago before you started on the brand? Definitely, um, like we've enjoyed the journey, I have to say, um, with Rachel as well, we've enjoyed the journey. It would definitely be, and I, I know the phrase and I've heard it, is celebrate the wins because we were so, um, we didn't appreciate how much we'd achieved until we look back and see how much we achieved. And now we kind of go, wow, that was that we managed to get to this place or that area or that shore. Um, it would be enjoy the moment and yeah, yeah just really enjoy the wins. Yeah, that's brilliant. Brilliant bit of advice. I think we're all so um, focused on the next thing, the next mm -hmm. step. Hang on a minute, take a breath, step back, and think, do you know what? This last even week, month, six months, we've done this, 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 this. And celebrating with the team so the team sort of get that 
you know, let them celebrate as well, you know, because otherwise, a, obviously, a, a brand of your size, obviously, it's a huge team effort, a lot of key people there that are, that are you know, instrumental into the, into the success. So, um, a lot of things going on in social, a lot of things going on in the industry. You know, how do you sort of keep abreast of um, sort of trends in your industry? Is there sort of a go-to sort of um, resources or sort of, you know, what, how do you sort of keep on top of everything in your industry? Um, so again, it goes back to the influencers. So the, you can see trends within the makeup looks and how they're used. And I, I know it's not the same for every um, brand, but um, we, Instagram, TikTok has taken over massively in the last few months with uh, lockdown. And um, TikTok, um, Instagram, Facebook, kind of, but it's more the Instagram and TikTok side of it that is more led. The irony is I personally don't do social media at all. Um, I, I have accounts, but I don't do anything. I, I'm dormant. Um, but when it comes to the brand, again, it's knowing your voice and, and working with people that you yeah. enjoy, other brands that you enjoy collaborating with. And seeing how, so obviously this year, all festivals are done. So that route to market is gone. So, you know, trying to push festival um, going out stuff, it's not going to happen. So we've created festival at home kits because I think a lot more people oh, yeah. will be having festivals in their back garden. Yeah. So we've done um, hen party kits, bride kits, things yeah. that everyone needs to party after this and they need to celebrate the things that they couldn't. Um, yeah. So it's knowing how the customer is evolving and their requirements really. Yeah. That keep, yeah. keep yeah. Keep Keep an eye on all social channels. So you, um, I noticed, um, obviously TikTok. You mentioned that. So that's going. That's you, you. You've got sort of some of the influencers that you work with, or you know, influencers TikTokers um, that that you work with. Have you done any paid ads on TikTok at all? No, I haven't actually. Uh, we've done. We've only done a few TikTok where we've uploaded other people's stuff. So we send out and then we upload it to TikTok. But we're quite new on it. I have to say, we're we're slower to the market than I would hope. Yes. Uh, but it's social media is such a beast. There is so many channels with your YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. Pinterest, all of that. Um, so you just have to put your energies where you think it'll make the most difference. And Instagram for us is still one of our yeah. bigger. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you won't be catching me on TikTok anytime soon. <laughs> 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 Not same, same. I keep threatening my kids. I keep, I've got a 13 and a 16 year old nearly and I keep saying, right, I'm going to do TikTok. No! <laughs> I, I actually, I have to be honest, I have done some TikToks with my daughter and I said, I swear, if you put them on, you're homeless. You're yeah. out. Well, I, I actually wound my kids up the day before yesterday because they, they have a, they have, they have an ads platform and we are, we're on the beta platform literally literally only last week so personally i've not used it yet you know not not to do tiktoks but to do ads for brands and whatnot so i said to my kids um, a couple of nights ago oh i signed up for tiktok yesterday what you know but obviously for the ads not to do my, my youngest my youngest he, he, he does quite a lot of youtube and, and creates videos and whatnot he's like almost mortified <laughs> head in <the> game. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's, that's been fantastic, Paula. So many great tips there. Um, I think what I always like to do is finish with a, a book recommendation. You know, uh, it's something that I've always found, over, especially as I'm getting older, books have been a real sort of uh, inspiration to me, you know, and uh, spending time just very quite simply spending 10, 20 quid in, and diving into a book and so much knowledge you can get from a, a simple book. Have you got um, a particular book recommendation that you would make? Uh... I've tried so many. I have to say I've tried so many. I've tried autobiographies um, by, you know, famous people and like Richard Branson. I have to say it bored me because it wasn't my life. It wasn't my life. And I just couldn't, yeah. it, you know, I, I got his spirit. I just couldn't get it. I, I read Start With Why. Yeah. And I finished it and I still didn't know what my why was. <laughs> just, you got stuck with that one. <laughs> I, think, I think my why is people. I love people and that's where my buzz and my energy comes from. Yeah. Um, but I read it and I thought, I'm just as confused as the first page. <laughs> um, so my, my favourite, I have to say my favourite, and I've given it to my children, um, and it's an old, old book, um, is Who Moved My Cheese? Okay. And that one to me is the easiest. It's only a 20-minute read. Yeah easiest for um, push and restart 
and realizing where you are, what you're doing. Yeah. Stop. Just think. Yeah. This, you, you know, hitting your head against the wall because something has changed is not going to change the situation you're in. Just stop, restart, let's think and move forward. So that, to me, who moved my cheese? It's a basic, it's a, it's an easy read. Oh, 20 minutes, quick, quick hit. Give you yeah. a reset, refresh. Yeah, sounds great, sounds great. Yeah. 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 Okay, so those guys that are listening in that would like to find out more about you, more about the brand, what's the best place for them to connect with you? So we've got our website, beautyboulevard.com, which is spelled beautyblvd.com. Um, uh, there you can see all our products. We have face, uh, makeup, eyes, lips, all different ranges on there. Um, we're also, as I say, on in-flight magazines, on Jet2 and Tui, which will hopefully be starting up again. Uh, we've got a US domain as well. Um, so yeah, beautyboulevard.com is probably the easiest, but... Follow us on Instagram. It's Beauty Boulevard UK. Yep. And um, yeah, there's plenty of um, stuff there to keep you entertained, I'm sure. Mm. Definitely not me. But <laughs> <laughs> so not TikTok. <laughs> if you do find me on TikTok, let me know because my daughter's in trouble. Yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a mask of you doing some TikTok. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being a guest on Ecom at One. And I look forward to probably catching up with you again in a few months' time and see how, see how